Hi and welcome to our third live event. Um, this is Skincare Secrets. So we're going to whisper in your ear and only tell you these secrets that our brilliant estheticians have come up with. Um, and talking of that, I want to introduce you to Sunita. Hi, Paul. I'm the um, a facialist skin expert at Paul Edmonds. Brilliant. And Janae. Hi, Paul. I'm also the uh, um, esthetician facialist at uh, you, Paul Edmonds. You nearly forgot then, didn't you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're here to share our knowledge, uh, tip, uh, tips and tricks, be careful in saying that, um, tonight, and to elevate your skincare routine. Um, it's coming out of lockdown, I think it's one of those things, and we're also coming out of winter, and it's that time when we need to start looking at our skin seriously and think what we can do. And our idea really with this evening is that we can actually show you some tips and tricks to just elevate what you do on a, in a general way. Um, and by doing that with these kind of little tweaks, your skin will hopefully be glowing by the time you're out there again and hopefully coming in to see us. And so I know they're gonna show some of their kind of ideas that they've come up with to do that. Now, before I do that, I'm going to introduce uh, Yasha. He's the man sitting in the corner um, and he's gonna be looking at your uh, questions and he's gonna tell you how to do that. Over to Yasha. So hi everyone, just a couple of housekeeping rules. The chat function has been disabled tonight. So if you want to send through your questions, just do so on the Q&A button that's on your tab bar. Um, I will be looking through your questions and hopefully answer, um, asking Janae and Sunita um, for those answers. So over to you, Paul. Okay, well, I know that Janae has come up with a, a brilliant video um, and it's one of those things of uh, it's a little bit more than you'd normally do for your general kind of uh, things, but I have to say it's brilliant and we're then going to dissect it and make it simple. One of the things I think is very hard when, in beauty is that you go to a beautician or an esthetician and you have these things done and then you go home and you forget how to do it. So this is to reinvigorate you, get those products working again. And I'm handing over to Janae. Hi, hi there. Um, you will see in the video um, different techniques that I've actually um, applied. And the first one is double cleansing, which is exceptionally important um, because, you know, throughout the day, we go through the environment with um, airborne pollution, bacteria, buildup of makeup, because we apply our makeup um, throughout the day. So this will help to um, show you how to remove everything so that you, you can end up with a really great squeaky clean skin. Okay, brilliant. And then I know you go through the rest of the cycle. So should we start off by showing the video which you've done?
amazing and also it felt quite relaxing so yes. you're going to take this with you know I'm not sure about all those people watching out there but I know that I'm a bit on the thick side so can we go through that step by step yes of course I mean um, as I ex explained earlier double cleansing is very important and the first part of the cleansing routine that I actually did was um, using a, a cream cleanser that has natural oils in it. And basically what that's going to do is actually break down all the buildup throughout the day, your makeup, all the products that you had applied previously. And if you take at least 45 to 60 seconds to actually massage it in and then remove it um, with a damp pad or tissues, um, that really, you know, um, will break down and remove everything on the skin. And um, the second uh, cleanser that I did was um, a water-based uh, gel foaming cleanser. Now that um, particular cleanser, I tend to use myself only about three times a week, but you can use it every day. Um, it's a more active ingredient cleanser and it has... Um, uh, active uh, properties in it that help to uh, for congested skin breakouts blemishes it helps minimize pores I mean I don't get breakouts but I love it because basically um, I use it because I have blemishes and I love how it cleans um, my pores also it's cleaning the skin um, and making sure all the dirt and grime is actually removed from your pores and the skin and remove any leftover from the first cleansing that you did. Brilliant. Because I'm going to say a lot of people are having problems at the moment, especially wearing masks all the time. And I yeah. know that I, I get breakout in my beard. <clears throat> um, yeah. But thankfully, no one really sees it because it's in my beard. But it is one of those things. That well, kind of men can actually time. use this for shaving as well. Right and to cleanse um, their, uh, their beard. And it's all because of the active ingredients in it, like glycolic and salicylic, you can actually use it as a mini peel. Okay. And so you can apply a thin layer over your skin, leave it on for about three minutes and then rinse off. And that's something you can do like once a week or once every other week, just to right. give your skin that boost it needs. Okay, no, that's great. Thank you very much. I've got it. I've got a question from a viewer who's asking actually, Janae, um, they double cleanse at the night, but they don't do it in the morning. Should they just be double cleansing? Should they be double cleansing twice a day? Should they be doing it evening and daytime? No, it's not necessary to do it twice a day. Um, the most important part of double cleansing is in the evening. That's when you want to do it the most. And in the morning, you just need to do your usual single cleanse. Okay. And I think it's quite interesting you're saying about using the cream cleanser to start with to break down the, the I get, imagine it's the fats in the makeup and yeah. the, the oil in your skin. So break that the down. Oil. And it, it, that goes back over to me with hairdressing because hairdressing, what we do is if you've got someone that has kind of that greasy hair, you actually apply 
it says shampoo to break it down but we've we've got a shampoo that contains oil that actually breaks down that that kind yes. of greasiness to start with and then you can it comes out really easily similar thing i mean you know it is it is important to do these stages because at the end of the day if if you don't um prepare your skin properly then products that you use expensive products that you buy and use are not going to be able to penetrate the skin right. okay. you know you're wasting your money in other words okay brilliant thank you um maybe so maybe just to recap what's the top tip in that for our audience Double Top tip is double cleansing. And it doesn't matter also, I can just say quickly, um, if you don't have two different cleansers, you can actually use the same cleanser twice. Great. Great. We'll move on to the next part. The next part of your video. So, Sunita, do you Hi. want to explain what's going on? Yes, in the second part, it's about the exfoliation process. And uh, as you can see, we're using the uh, Eminent Strawberry Demifoliant, um, which is grain based. So it's got the, um, the rice uh, grains within it. And you mix that in with the uh, uh, SkinCeuticals Gentle Cleanser. The beauty of that, being able to mix the two uh, products together, is that you can control the amount of grains within um, the cleanser, so that if you want a more abrasive exfoliation, um, you can add more, and if you need it, if you want a much softer exfoliation, then you can add less, and then you're in basically charge of, of how much you want to particularly use at that particular time. You mix that together and then small circular motions for two, three minutes, you know, a couple of minutes actually, just thoroughly cleanse and, um, and exfoliate and then rinse it all off um, as well. Um, yeah, so those are the two steps. So I guess that the, the idea that you can mix it yourself is that you can add as much as you think you need. Because I've got very delicate skin, me. Yeah, so then, then you just add a little few, you know, less no, grains yeah. and just to uh, facilitate that as well, if you yeah. have more, more delicate skin. Uh, the good thing about um, the grains and the topical experience that we have at Port Edmonds is that none of the grains are impacting the environment in any way. Right. Um, it doesn't go into the water supply. It doesn't go into the ocean and the sea. Um, there's no microplastics within it. They do sort of dissolve and they're not impacting the environment at all. So that's that's also really nice. But not only are you making yourself beautiful, that you're kind of not harming anything in, in the same, at the same no, time. it's really important that, you know, we follow uh, that. Through. Now, with the, with the kind of exfoliation, kind of, do you have a top tip with that? Um, yeah, I mean, just uh, make sure that you're exfoliating to... Uh, at least once a week, but definitely twice a week as well, uh, to ensure that you're exfoliating all the dead layers of the skin, uh, facilitating I'm... that the delivery of all the um, more active ingredients that you're going to use following up afterwards, so they penetrate better. Yeah, I've actually got a question that's been emailed regarding exfoliants. I've, this um, this question relates to the the scrubs so if mm -hmm. you don't want to use a scrub are there other exfoliants that you could use instead of a scrub exfoliant yes um the beauty of that is that there are alternative exfoliators so um you can get pre-blended exfoliators which are topical um and physical uh, but the the favorite of mine is the uh retexturizing activator so it's a serum-based exfo uh, exfoliation gel serum that you use on a daily basis, part of your skincare routine on a daily basis. That just decremates all the dead layers on the surface of the skin and uh, ensures that the products that you use afterwards and the active ingredients deliver much better. And you're not having to do the physical process every single, you know, once or so twice a week. So is that like a very light acid peel? Um, not, uh, not, it's very light and, and there's right. a few uh, compounds in there that, that are active that's helping the skin to uh, shed and desquamate. Yes. Yeah, good. 
I was going to say that's the thing that makes your skin bloom again, isn't it? Because it, one yeah. of the things that happens is that with those dead cells, you can end up with the skin looking quite dull. Yes, so, exactly. That's the whole point of exfoliation is to shift uh, those dull grey cells away so you get the beautiful, fresh, glowing skin to come yeah. through. And I know being a slightly older person myself, um, that as you get older, your skin kind of, I think the circulation doesn't work quite as well as it used to. So again, imagine doing that massaging would help. Yes, no, no, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, well, thank you. Um, now, I've, I've actually just, sorry, just okay. there's um, one other question that I'm just reading right now, and it's, can you use um, exfoliant on your body? I had that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, you can use the um, uh, uh, blemish and age uh, cleansing gel. You can use it on your, if a client is suffering from any breakouts on your upper chest, upper back, or shoulders um you can use um that to eliminate any of the breakouts there um, if you do uh, suffer from any of those little bumps on the upper arms as well oh, yeah. you can also use your uh, exclusive exfoliator to uh sort of rub there and that will desquamate that as well and get rid of that great bumping. great thank you so we're now moving on to the interesting stuff i think the interesting stuff um, and it's the stuff that I find a bit mystifying. So um, I know, Janae, I saw you using lymphatic drainage in your video. Can you talk to us about that? What is it to start with? Feel so relaxed watching that. I know, I mean, it's like, oh, can't wait okay. to have that done to me. <laughs> you wanted to know what lymphatic is. I'll explain yes. um, very simply what lymphatic drainage is. Um, lymphatic system is an extremely important um, uh, system um, that we have. It's important to your immune system. And basically, it's uh, a network of hundreds of li little. Um, lymph nodes and how to explain that the lymph nodes is uh, like a bean shape and their job is to actually um, filter and drain fluid back to the bloodstream so doing a lymphatic drainage massage you're encouraging um, flow to the skin you're um, encouraging drainage it helps with um, a congested skin um, it helps with blood flow on the skin. Um, it even helps with if you suffer with sinus problems. You can do a little massage to release your sinuses. Um, the, um, the technique is only a very small um, part of what I've done in the video. I mean, there's a lot more that you can do. And both myself and Sunita, we do um, quite a lot more advanced treatments in the salon, which you will get amazing results from. But doing this sort of technique yourself at home, if you can manage to do it at least mm, two to three times a week, if you can, 
would help, would keep your skin optimal um, result. You'll get fantastic results from it. It also helps to tighten the muscle in your skin as well. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks amazing. And I've, I've had you do lymphatic drainage in it. I love the yeah. bit around the eyes. That's a bit where you want to go to sleep and <laughs> to stay there or sometimes wake up snoring. Um, but that's great. And you used, what was it you used to on the, on the skin? Um, I use something that would help to um, help the, the, the slipness of, for me to do the massage. And one of my favorite um, products is um, Phyto Corrective Mask. And um, this mask gives you, um, soothes your skin. It's cool on the skin. It gives you the slippage that you need to actually um, massage, um, do the massage. Um, this particular uh, product um, I love because if you have hot flashes, as we do when we get older, um, redness in our skin, it helps to calm, <laughs> it helps to calm and soothe. Um, it's also fantastic if um, you've had laser treatment, you can actually use it after your laser treatment to help calm everything. Um, I personally use it after my workout because I find it helps calm my skin. And the utmost thing, oh, if we can and when we can go back on holiday, this is the one product I recommend that you take on holiday um, because of the UV exposure. Um, the product has a lot of benefits to it. Um, it, you know, it has thyme and cucumber and olive extracts. It also has hyaluronic acid, which, you know, is very hydrating and we have naturally in our bodies anyway. I was say hyaluronic's the buzzword of the moment, but yeah, anything that is hyaluronic is. must be good. Um, yeah. And I was going to say, obviously using the massage technique and that work in synergy to make it even better. Yes, I mean, the mask you can, you can, um, you can use when you're in the bath. You can do a little massage in the bath whilst you're in the bath. Um, on a hot, uh, sunny day, you can actually put it in the fridge and use it, and it makes it even more cool and soothing on the skin. So it, again, you can take the sting out of a sunburn or anything like that. Exactly. It's basically, yeah. it's basically in the SOS treatment that yeah. we have. Yeah, so it's to go to as an SOS treatment. So I've got a couple of questions that have come through. Um, the first one is, do you think jade rollers are good? Do they provide a similar impact to your kind of massaging techniques? Um, jade rollers and um, quartz and, and jade uh, tablets are good to, to use at home. Um, you will get some benefits from it, but I personally feel that using your hands um, with a light pressure, you get a better flow um, of doing the lymphatic uh, drainage massage. But yeah, you know, if you're comfortable with using jade rollers, um, then fine, that's not a problem. The, the other thing that I noticed when you were doing the massage, you were actually very gentle with your skin. Like you yeah. say, you're using a slippage. And, you know, we all watch videos of people doing kind of stuff on um kind of youtube or whatever and very often people are really rough with their skin it does that, does that do damage if you are using too much pressure then yes it can um you should be dragging the skin or pulling the skin uh, whilst you're massaging or if you're um, cleansing or exfoliating because it can cause surface damage so it's always best to do it gently as well um, not to create any broken capillaries or uh, drag and pull within the skin as well. So always a bit gentle is better. Firmness, you can add later on if you're doing uh, a good firm massage, but make sure there's lots of slippage, like the right. Phytic Corrective Mask Gel. And is there a, any a time where you, um, I mean, how often should you be doing face masks? Personally, I, I, I think you can use uh, masks up to two, three times a week. I mean, some of my clients, I do give them a range of different masks <laughs> to, for their different concerns. And I think that's absolutely as it should be, that you have a full, uh, a different range of masks that, that you can go to depending on how your skin's feeling at any time of the uh, week, day, months, you know, seasons, et cetera. 
And yeah, I mean, if your face is feeling, you know, if you get up one morning and you feel quite puffy, you know, you feel that you didn't sleep very well that night, then, you know, there's a ray of mask that you can actually use. Um, it takes, you know, five minutes in the morning, apply it, remove it, put your makeup on, off to work you go. So, I was going to yeah. say, that's a bit like going back to hair, because that hair's this thing I know. And with hair, I'm always into people using, well, first of all, you always go for the main concern and you deal with that at that time and you then may change it as it goes on. Uh, but also, it's much better to do that five minutes. Yes. Than think, oh, I haven't got time. I'll wait till Thursday. Oh, no, it's Sunday or Monday. <laughs> and it stays on the side. So I think that that's a great idea, that five minute thing, because it makes it possible. Well, the mask yes. you could actually wear um, a very thin layer, uh, if they gel mask, um, to hydrate the skin. You can wear them actually overnight as well, a few of them, which is a phytoprotective mask, definitely. If you didn't want to use a mask and you wanted to do the massaging technique with a cleanser, could you do that? Janine? Yeah. Yes, of course you can. You can use a cleanser. As long as it's a cleanser that's got some slippage, like some oils in it, it's yes, definitely you can use a cleanser. Great. So top tip is? Top tip. The key top tip is do your lymphatic drainage, you know, uh, two to three times a week uh, to get the maximum result of your products and your skin. Brilliant. Now we're moving on to the dreaded kind of hydration. <laughs> From that, I've learned something already, um, and that's I, I don't do it properly. So t take me through it. What do we do with hydration? What do we do? Because I noticed you started with the eyes first. Um, yes. So Jeanne, as you can see, was using um, a eye uh, balm, the eye balm from SkinCeuticals. But as you can see, she was using her delicate fingers, her ring fingers and applying it on the occipital bone gently as well without dragging or pulling and then on the top occipital bone as well. Um, that's one way of applying. The other way is also to use it sort of a, like a mini um, lymphatic, just in like a finger scoop as well, not forgetting your fine lines or crow feet there. And you can just do a figure of eight there as well. I was gonna say that's the bit that everyone can, that's my correct. daughter's at land again, oh my God, I'm in crow's feet. What can I do? Uh, but it's great seeing that that's the first thing you work on. And also, I know I've been doing it wrong because I've been putting it too close to my eye and you just... No, no, yeah, exactly. So it's always on the occipital bone. You can just feel it. What, because the skin around the eye is so delicate, it's, it's going to take what it needs rather than you overloading it and putting it straight on, on the, eye, the skin around the eyes. Um, what happens is that if you overload it, then you can uh, end up having puffy eyes as well. So, and that, that leads on to something, another issue as well. So you're just applying it correctly on the occipital bone, the skin will take in exactly what it needs. And if you do have any residue left over on your fingertips, just sort of pat it very, very gently. Uh, so you're not actually putting the first, uh, the first. Uh, treatment there, first of all, basically. Yeah. Because I always said I questions. couldn't use, sorry, I was going to say, I, just I, I, I was always told I couldn't um, use eye creams because they always made my eye puffy, but now I know why. Yeah, overloading. Overloading. <laughs> I've actually got a question whilst we're talking about the eyes. Um, what's great for dark circles? Um, so any uh, of the, um, the eye balm will, uh, will help with that, as well as the uh, eye complex as well, AG eye complex as well then we have from our eminence uh, range as well we have this viscous high eye lift as well and uh the cucumber eye gel as well so several that we can choose from to fight target the right skin concerns 
and why, obviously and why we've got... do you get these why do you get these crow's feet what right from? so uh crow's feet or deep lines can occur from uh advanced glycation end products basically what that means is that it's the um uh, fructose that can attach themselves to your collagen and elastin fibers and when when that happens is that the collagen fibers tend to snap and create that deep crevice as well the beauty of the ag eye complex is that it's helping supporting uh, uh rebuild and support those collagen and elastin fibers again so that you're redensifying that skin area again right so then that, then so moving on to the rest of the face, kind of moisturising the rest. Absolutely. So going on to the rest of the face, we do have the AGA complex as well, which does a similar thing with the um, gly uh, advanced glycation end products as well. But my favourite uh, hydration for the um, skin area, there are several, but I'd like to talk about the hyaluronic acid basically. So hyaluronic acid we all is all part of our natural skin process and we all uh, produce it naturally. As time goes by this um, depletes within our skin and uh, this is where we uh, introduce it topically and within our treatment plan as well uh, with fabulous treatments like the mesotherapy where we're using medical grade hyaluronic acid and vitamin C as well where it's um, going deep into the skin and plumping and filling from within so it's a deep deep treatment but at home a favorite of mine is the hydrating b5 uh, um, and um, the other one is the uh, ha intensifier and that's got the um the purple rice within it so that that is um again has the ability to hold lots of moisture molecules within the skin and it's um, a plumping and filling. I started using this in the first lockdown and I was blown away how fantastic it is. And I've been uh, recommending it to anybody and everybody <laughs> since then, basically. So it really thickens and densifies and uh, eliminates any crepiness as well. So now, those are the hyaluronic based favorites of mine. Now Obviously, I know that the one, sorry, the one that oh. I used on the video was triple lipids. And um, that's one of my favorites because it adds, you know, triple the amount of um, uh, uh, moisture back into your skin. It protects the skin's skin barrier and it actually delivers eight hours of hydration to your skin as well. So you can, you know, any skin type can actually use it. It's quite a rich cream, but yet um, very light. Now, the, the other thing I remember you, you girls getting me on to is the snail stuff the snail oh, yeah. serum, <laughs> um, which you said was going to densify my skin because my skin was getting a little bit thin. So it's the, it's the growth factor within that. Right. It's the growth factor that we uh, densify. See, it's the endocare um, tensage concentrates that we recommend that you, that we recommend to use at night time. And it's the growth factor within that uh, that's densifying, re-thickening the skin from within. Um, which I know that we've placed you on as a program for Loved it. as well. Absolutely and there's a great little it. story there. There's a great little story behind it. Um, did you want to tell that, Sinead, shall I? Oh, let me tell it, because I love telling okay. that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, when they, whenever someone says it's snails, they all think, oh my God, it's snails, you know, using snails to make a, um, a serum or a cream. But in fact, these snails are very well looked after in Spain and the actual um, uh, secretion that they produce is from behind the ears. That's what they use, not from what's underneath. So um, from their slime. not from their slime, it's behind the ears. And these snails are so well looked after, it's unbelievable. <laughs> That's very good to know. And I know, I know they found out about it, but... Um, with the snail farms where they're doing it to snails to eat that the people had kind of old kind of bodies but their hands and upper kind of upper arm were kind of really lovely still and that's yeah, why they kind of found out about it aging. yeah so brilliant now uh, that brings um, aging bits bring me on to i know the one bit that i'm always being made to do and it's a bit boring I'm so sorry, Paul, yeah. just to interject. Yeah. I have yeah, a question. 
um, regarding retinoids. So retinols. Yeah. What's your guys? What is, what's your view on retinols, Sunita? Right, retinols are uh, vitamin A. So vitamin A is a uh, ingredient that's to be respected and um, it is a very active ingredient, but it's suitable for um, pretty much everybody from the age of about mid twenties onwards. It's great as an anti-aging treatment uh, right to any age after that. But if it's younger, it can be used to help with, uh, break, uh, with breakouts. Um, uh, we do monitor when we do place a client on the retinol, which is why where the virtual consultations come in to their own. We'll be hand holding you through that process. Where, you know, starting on a lower dosage, you know, once maybe once a week for the first two, three weeks, and then taking you up through that process on higher grade uh, and uh, retin uh, retinols, vitamin A's. Um, and increasing that dosage over time. You only apply it at night time as well. Um, and you must follow the protocols that we do put you on just so that you don't uh, sensitize your skin or get a reaction. And, and we help you facilitate that in your home care. Yeah, Obviously, I, retinol is, is, a, not, is, is uh, a lot of older ladies or mid 20s onwards use it for anti aging purposes. but. You also have to remember that retinol is very good for hyperpigmentation, for scarring on the skin, um, you know, because it, it's turning over the cells in the skin. So it's helping to repair the yeah. skin constantly. Absolutely. What yeah. it's doing yeah. is, is, is based, what its job is re at uh, it, having it part of your skincare routine is at night, is that it's turning over your cell turnier, turnover quickly much faster yeah so it's also that process is also encouraging and densifying and, and uh within your skin and strengthening your skin from within as well but also shedding much much faster and, and renewing itself much faster as well but that's why you need to be watched during it and I, I think the virtual consultations are, are brilliant and they're i Absolutely. know you do really yeah kind of yeah. full-on ones that, that are, are great and if anyone wants to do that then i'd say Know, book for a, a virtual <laughs> consultation and then you can be taken through the, all these stages so you know exactly what you're doing because I think what's the worst thing in in beauty that happens is that and, and in hair people buy stuff because they've been told that it'd be really good for them to have and then they get home and they leave it on the shelf for a year and then realize it's out of date and they can't use it so now I think the virtual consultation is one of those things that it keeps you on point I agree I mean Sorry. sorry. No, sorry, I agree sorry. because I just think that, you know, exactly what you said, Paul. And also, you know, you get friends recommending their friends the product that they love and they use, but it's it's not necessarily it doesn't suit that person's skin yeah. type. So yeah, virtual consultation is brilliant. It this just means section, that this section of our live event has kind of drawn quite a few questions. Um we've got about five minutes left, so I'm just gonna go through them and if, if you wouldn't mind answering them either of you um the first one is it's about this this hydration piece of the routine um some of our viewers have multiple products that they use so for example an antioxidant like c ferulic and then discoloration defense and maybe ha and ha intensifier um specifically should you be leaving a gap a long gap between each one when you apply them no 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 it's, it's, it's a straightforward <laughs> layering process it's a straightforward layering process that you you know if it's a daytime routine you'll you'll introduce your antioxidant whether it be c fluoric or any of the others fluoritin for example you'll get then be going into whichever skin concerns you have we'll have already picked out the, ser the corrective serums and antioxidants that you're going to place in and you just rock you nobody really has loads of time in the morning you're running out that door once we can all get out furlough so yes you just apply them uh one by one don't forget your spf which we're going to talk about in a minute and and yeah that's it just go Do and it. i suppose the c ferulic again the same person's asked the same question the c ferulic and the ha intensifier it's reducing that transdermal water loss Absolutely. So do they need to have a moisturiser on top of it or not? Um, um, I 
I, I personally would, basically, I right. would, and I, you know, and it, we would find one that's exactly right for you. If you don't particularly want another, another layer, we'll find the lightest possible for you. Great. Uh, another question on if you change routine um, and you get a breakout, what would you stop, if anything? Um, Janae or Sunita, whoever wants to answer. It this depends one. what 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 product you're actually using, because it, you know it it could be um, your cleanser, it could be your um, hydration. It just depends what product you're actually using, and it, it's probably better to actually get a consultation. Yeah, um, so and understand. that way we can determine exactly what products you're using. Um, what reaction you're having um, and bespoke it especially for you. So you then tweak it? Yes, exactly. You might not necessarily need to give up all the products that you're using. It might just be one or two, but until we can actually, you know, speak to you and actually um, see your skin, then, you know, th that way we can, we can determine what, what's needed. Because retinols are a good example there where you can start using a retinol and all of a sudden you get spots. It's like drawing yeah. all of the products out, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. which is then why we're there uh, to take you through that process to uh, ensure that you're on the right other, uh, right skincare to, uh, yeah. to eliminate the breakouts during that time. Right, and one, one final question on this topic. Um, there's a viewer who's saying that they have been wearing masks, suffering from redness, where the mask covers their skin. I think you've already covered this, but what products would you recommend to deal with that redness and sensitivity? At this particular point, um, uh, if they're not sensitive, then certainly uh, the Blemish and Age, and we've got the Blemish and Age cleanser, but we've talked about that already, but the other one that we haven't talked about is the serum, the Blemish Age Defense. So you, just a couple of drops within your uh, uh, skin routine as part of your layering routine. And you can also beat of that one. You can also target it if you do get a nasty spot as well. So that's and also to calm, don't forget to calm in the skin as well. You can yes. use the phytocorrective mask to help calm yeah. and soothe the skin. Yeah. That's great. And um, actually you have some of the organic ranges as well, like calm yeah. skin, they, we have they the, help. Yeah. We have the clear skin um, within the organic range as well. And and for sensitive skin, we have the calm skin range within the eminence range as well. I love, I love how you edit it and you kind of twist it around for each individual. So you'll use a bit of this and a bit of that. I think that's great. Um, and I know, as I was about to say before, the final phase, which is the phase that is always a bit boring for me, is uh, putting on my sunscreen, my SPF. Um, and I know that this is very important that this is done. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. It's the yeah, most important it, part. It, it is important to put your sunscreen on every day. I mean, you've got to protect your skin from the elements, UVA, UVB, you know, infrared, um, even sitting in front of the computer by your window. It's very important because, you know, the last thing you want is as you get older, not wearing a sunscreen, you'll find you'll develop dark spots on your skin. You know, you'll develop, your skin will start to get slightly crapey. Um, you'll develop more lines and wrinkles. So, you know. And that's if you're yeah. lucky. <laughs> if you're not <laughs> lucky, you end up with skin <laughs> cancer. So it is kind of a good thing to be yeah. in there. But the beauty that what we have at Paul Edmonds is that we've got a vast range of SPFs. We have at least uh, 30 to choose from, and they are designed for every skin type and, and concern and uh, whether you want some tint in it or non-tint or whether you it's for a, a child or if it's for your body, there's always something mm -hmm. within that range to pick just for you as well. A lot of people kind of come in and they say to me, I don't bother with that because it's in my makeup. It's, it can be makeup, you're right, but we, we actually don't have anything of that ilk there. We have an SPF with a tint within it or, or a, a makeup finish within it, but it's a secondary item. It's not the first uh, item. It's uh, the, the most important aspect of that is the SPF 50, yeah. okay? Uh, and um, yeah, that's the most important. I was always fascinated when you explained that 50, 30, you know, how much you need to put on. Uh, I think it's probably worth covering that. Yeah, so 
uh, the SPF 50, if you were to, with any SPF, if you were to apply it, the, to get that, that percentage, you really do need to uh, put on at least an inch or a couple of two centimeters amount uh, on your skin to get that full amount of SPF 50. So for example, if you just use, uh, if you lose less than that or half of that, you're effectively walking around with half of your SPF basically. Right. So it is very important that you do apply the correct amount. But, you know, realistically, as we all know, it's not everybody's going to put that inch amount on your face over all your other products and then you've still got mm. makeup to put on as well so i've got another question from a viewer who's saying that if they've been used they've been really good they're wearing spf every day and um, they find that they find that they're getting breakout what i mean what's the breakout from and is there another alternative i don't know, either of you janae well um the breakout it I mean, do we really know it's from your SPF? It could be from a number of other things that you're using. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's from your SPF, but we do have alternative um, SPF and other products that you could actually use for your skin. But yet again, um, it's something that would need to be spoke to you. Um, you'd need to have a consultation um, for us to actually determine what is causing that breakout and to see what products you are actually using. So that we have the uh, 360 range and we have the all free range within that as well. So the all free, if you're getting breakouts, we'll put you on an SPF that actually won't impact any breakouts exactly. uh, like an oil make free. It and make it worse. Yeah. And I know that I, in the summer, I use the, the powder uh, because yes, the brush on block. My, yeah. My, my scalp's a little bit on the, my hair's a little bit on the thin side on the top and that's yeah. brilliant for <laughs> the top of my head. Absolutely. But the beauty of that one, if you really should be applying your SPF every couple of hours, effectively, yeah. if you're outside, if you're outside all day. And the beauty of that, because, um, you know, it's it's translucent, it's going to go on really quickly. Yeah. You just brush it on and, you know, you, you just, it's not just for the face. You can use it if you have a slightly thinner um, uh, scalp you can place it up there as well so again you can be protected well, that, it's one of those things I also recommend my clients if they're going into the sun for their parting so you don't end up burning your parting and your crown which very often happens if, if you've been away on holiday you're really good at putting your SPF on all over but forget your head absolutely and it's so easy it's compact it's in your bag it's in your handbag your man bag whichever you know you have so it's easy to carry with you no excuses <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it's very translucent as well. Remember, so yeah. if you're if you've got no hair, you're completely bald. Yeah, no one will know that you're wearing it. You oh. know, and it's so matte. You don't get. You don't look greasy. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've just got to wrap up, guys. It's got forty-five minutes. It's gone so. It's gone really quick. I, there's just one final question. I think it's worth just covering. It's going back to um, a couple of uh, sections, but. Um, someone's asking on how often should they use a vitamin C or retinols on the skin? What would your advice be? I suppose virtual consultations, really. Yeah. Yeah. Vitamin C every single day, but still virtual consultation. If you want to um, find that you want to go on to the retinol, we'd have to actually do it safely. Great. I, I can see us doing another one of these and you're getting you two to talk about more kind of that. that in-depth stuff that you do as well so that'd be great i want to thank you both and yasha for tonight um and just to let you know that if you want to do a virtual consultation if you contact us directly um through pauledmonds.com or you can go and do a direct mail um on instagram um we're going to be showing th this on instagram and on youtube so if you want to find out how to do that stuff that Janae was doing, I'm going to be watching it later. Um, I'm going to have a go tonight. Um, so <laughs> also, um, thank you very, very much for that. Um, we've got a, a couple of other things. We've got a P kit, which we've put together, which is an intro kit, which I don't know if you want to quickly say what that's about for beauty. Yeah. So that's got the um, gentle cleanser within it. It has the... A HA intensifier within it for the hyaluronic. 
acid and we have uh, two uh, sheet masks in there again with intensive high grade medical grade hyaluronic acid within that so um, they're fabulous masks and then we have um, some masks body for the hand, body oil and hands and, and masks for their Lovely joy. It's a good treat. It's a good beauty treat. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, so thank you very much. And hopefully look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.